Woohoo! The Museum of Apple Computers is finally up and running. And I couldn't have picked a better time to become a Mac collector. I just got this uh, laptop added to my collection. That didn't even need to pay anything for it. Well, yeah, I'm going to do a, uh, a video on this uh, computer as well as an article. It's a pretty sleek looking laptop. But not nearly as good looking as the, uh, the iBook G3. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the first inductee into the uh, Museum of Apple Computers, the PowerBook G3 Wall Street. Bum, 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 bum. What's this? That's me. That's my uh, WordPress blog. Yep, I'm here. But why would they make my disappearance such a big deal, though? Oh, look. There's another phone over there, just go off. It says, Matthew Peter missing. Matthew Peter, aka Matthew Matthew. I used to watch that channel a long time ago. <sighs> well, at least we won't have to encounter another missing person sign. Right? Action. Well, good thing uh, no one lives here anymore. It's probably the former uh, residents of the uh, map collector that uh, used to live there. mid-90s when he moved out. Anyways, wait a minute. I see another sign! I know that guy. It's Jason's Macintosh Museum! Man, I liked his videos. I'm not sure why he disappeared, though. Beats me. I always loved uh, watching the Australians' videos, and I even take some inspiration from them. Let's see if there is more stuff surrounding this mystery. There's a news article right up over there. Maybe it will give me some insight on just what the heck is going on. Let's find out the mystery behind these uh, disappearances. I'm kind of feeling sad about these uh, map collectors disappearing. I always love their videos. Alright, so let's see what this is all about. Action. 
so, I was right after all. Several Mac fans on YouTube did go missing after uh, all these years. Well, at least we got another one for the collection. Let's uh, take it home and frame it. Because I like how this uh, newspaper article looks. Usually news articles are, well, most news articles are like black and white, but this one's color. It's pretty cool. Surely it's got to be a uh, highly uh, collectible item right there, so let's frame it. Oh man, that's so bogus. I, Zach the Millennial, feel so bad about this. Action! Well, there's that sign. Kinda reminds me of that uh, sign from the Avengers, you know, uh, the last movie, Avengers Endgame. It even uh, says, uh, where do we go? Now we are gone. Yeah, anybody who's seen Avengers Endgame knows that that uh, side came from. Yeah, that came from. Well, I'd like to take it, but who has it now? I'm not actually allowed to, uh, grab any of these uh, signs. Because, well, it's part of uh, Mac Times. But, it does look cool though. Blown across. Because of the, uh, the dank wind. Man, I just came back from a shower after doing some uh, yard work, and yes, I do own a lawnmower. And now I'm ready to finish what I have started in the Museum of Apple Computers. Spring is a great time to get stuff done! I've been putting this off for, uh, for almost six years now. But now, it's time to go into the museum to finish what I have started. Let's go! The museum is finally back in business again after all these years. Alright, the uh, PowerBook G3 Wall Street was uh, only released in uh, early uh, 1998. Just only a few months after the um, release of the PowerBook G3 Kanga. And a year after uh, Steve Jobs has uh, returned to the company. Yeah, we've uh, pretty much seen the, uh, the changes of uh, Apple occur at this uh, time. And gone are all the, uh, the confusing uh, Mac product lines. Now, it's only four Macs. Four.
Well, actually, for the time being, it's three max, or this, depending on which how you look at it. Yeah, it's three max for the time being. The fourth one has yet to be revealed. And uh, one of the uh, the max released in the uh, the new product strategy was uh, one of the high end laptops, the PowerBook. Yeah. This was before uh, the iMac G3 would be released. And of course, um, it came uh, shipped with a uh, 233 megahertz PowerPC G3 processor. And the coolest part about it is that it can run Mac OS 10.2. Yes, this Mac over there fully supports Mac OS 10.2.8, no joke. But you have to do a lot of faffling around though. As opposed to the uh, the PowerBook G3 Kanga which doesn't support Mac OS 10.2.8. Although it does support the uh, the Mac OS 10 server OS, but that's just a uh, demo of what's to come. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, good-looking uh, laptop. I shall uh, compare it alongside a um, a contemporary uh, Windows laptop from the uh, the same uh, time period. All right, here is the uh, the PowerBook G3 Wall Street compared alongside a uh, a Windows laptop released during the uh, the same era. As you can see, it is a night and day difference. You can't really compare the two. Just look. This uh, compact armada is, well, as basic and utilitarian looking as, well, Carlos Casagrande Sr. Whereas this, this is about as beautiful looking as, uh, as Lenny Loud. And yeah, I'm putting in Loud House references in a uh, Mac-related video again. And guess what? The uh, the Loud House movie is going to be finally released, and I'm excited for it. Awesome. So, so yeah. In other words, this computer looks great. Sleek. Although not nearly as good as the, the uh, iBook G3 clamshell. Whereas this computer looks boring and utilitarian. And even if you uh, compare them uh, side by side when you open them up. Oh, and by the way, I really got to get a uh, operating system for this uh, laptop. It boots up and everything, but I just need a, uh, an OS for it. And it's missing one of the keys. Just look at there. There's the thick book. Now that is definitely a night and day difference. Very nice. And it's also like comparing the um, the Toyota Corolla or Toyota Camry to the uh, the much more sleeker looking. Mazda 626. Both are Japanese sedans, but the Toyota Camry is as boring as um, sedans can be, or the Corolla, whereas the Mazda 626 are uh, Mazda 6 or um, Mazda 3 are sleek looking as a sports car. So yeah. It's a night and day difference. This one clearly looks better than the Windows laptop. And next up, we're going to have a boot race between the PowerBook G3 Wall Street and a Windows laptop, not this one. Let's go! Alright, so we have the uh, PowerBook G3 Wall Street going up against a more modern 
Windows laptop from the year 2007. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that this PowerBook G3 Wall Street in particular, even though it originally shipped with a 233 MHz processor, it has the same 266 MHz PowerPC G3 processor from the PowerBook G3 PDQ. And that's because it had a motherboard upgrade. So yeah, has a, a motherboard upgrade. And it's why I like to call it the Frankenbook. It's the Frankenbook versus the Windows laptop. Let's go! Ready? Three, two, one, go! And they're off! The PowerBook G3 gets a head start because, well, it takes a while for the fan to kick in. And those are some good speakers, by the way. They are very loud. Yeah, very nice stereo speakers. Come on. And they're off. Here we go. There's the mouse cursor popping up. Oh, and there we go. The PowerBook G3 Wall Street. It's just going into the uh, Mac OS 8.6 menu screen. It's going to be exciting, man. And there you go. They uh, booted up at almost the same time. In fact, the Windows laptop is still at the... Uh, circle thing. So yeah, the PowerBook G3 Wall Street just absolutely destroyed a more modern Windows laptop from 2007. And it's crazy considering that this computer only has a 266 megahertz processor, whereas this one has an upgraded to 2.53 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo processor. Yeah, it is very fast, and something even better is that it even shuts down pretty fast. It shuts down pretty quick. compared to this one. Yeah, it shuts down so slowly that I'm not even going to bother wasting battery life to wait for it to shut down. So, we'll just end it here. The PowerBook G3 Wall Street is the clear victor. It still boots up pretty quick for a late 90s laptop. And you always gotta respect your elders. Sometimes the oldest things always win. Alright, it's so on to um the ports and features. Here's the uh, the ports of this uh, lovely laptop. We have an ADB port. This is also one of the uh, 
the last Apple laptop computers to use it. A printer and modem port, one of those uh, proprietary Apple serial ports. An Ethernet port for connecting to the internet. A, uh, an SCSI port, which lots of people refer to it as SCSI. Like, um, that uh, circular creature from uh, Reboot. Yeah, you remember that show, right? Reboot, the, uh, the computer animated show by uh, Mainframe Entertainment. You know that one, right? Well, if you don't, Google it. And we even got, like, a VGA port for plugging it into a monitor. And that is a pretty neat feature since, well, it would act as a, uh, sort of like a desktop computer. And we also got the, um, the power jack, the, uh, the port for the uh, the AC adapter. Yeah, got the uh, AC port, and we got sound in and sound out. Yeah, sound in. It's got a headphone jack, unlike the um, the iPhone 11. And that's not all, because there's more clever features that this computer has. Look at this, man. It's got a hot swappable drive bay. And there are several things that you can get for it. Like this uh, CD ROM drive. Let's put it in. Good old hot swappable drives. I so wish they still had them. Heck, I even wish that modern Mac still had hot swappable drive base. And that's not all. Even the battery is hot swappable. <laughs> Look at this right there. A lithium ion battery. Yeah. I like to keep it in there because, well, I like to keep it in there for decoration to make the computer look authentic. Would you look at that? And that's not the, uh, the coolest part. You can also swap it in for two batteries. Well, not that like if you want to. And even cooler is that um, yesteryear's Mac mentioned that a company called Fast Mac released a Blu-ray burner for the uh, PowerBook G Freeze with the hot swappable bay. I think it's specific to the Pismo though. Yeah, it's a pretty cool feature, but unfortunately not a lot of laptops have it anymore. Oh wait, there's more! Yeah, it's kind of difficult to do it with a uh, without fingernails. Ah, come on. Yeah, the keyboard, of course, can be uh, removed. Well. I thought that it could be removed. I did remove it uh, one time. Whoops. At least on the uh, other PowerBook G Freeze, you have this uh, removable keyboard. But it doesn't seem to be removable on this particular PowerBook G3. Although the indentations are there. 
Yeah, it's a pretty clever feature on um, certain PowerBook G3 models because you get to access the goods inside it. And it also does away with the reset switch since it relies on the commands to reset it. Yeah. No, it doesn't have a um, those uh, notches for removing the keyboard like the other PowerBook G Freeze. They're just there for decoration. Always learn things, man. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way. Yeah, it's a very nice keyboard. Very nice to type on. It also has two extra buttons there. Yeah, it also has the uh, a power button. Typical brightness and contrast controls and the mute button so yeah that's all I have to explain the PowerBook G3 Wall Street is a very feature packed laptop and some other PowerBook G3's are even more feature packed like the Pismo and let's move on to the games because we got three programs to test it out on. This is just a section for fun. Alright, let's go. Alright, so we got the uh, the PowerBook G3 Wall Street all hooked up to the uh, VGA monitor. And we're ready to go. Oh, and if you are wondering, no, this is not plastic. This material is actually uh, rubberized metal. So yeah, they uh, took metal and rubberized it. It does sound like plastic, but don't be fooled. This is rubberized metal, and it's probably one of the earliest Macs to use metal before the uh, the PowerBook G4 Titanium wowed us all. Yeah, not only looks good, but it's functional. Alright, let's turn it on. Zoom into the monitor so you can get a better view. Alright, let's play this boots up. That don't worry, we can always boot it. Sometimes my uh, PowerBook G3 Wall Street has problems of booting up, but that's okay though, because, well, it's the most temperamental of all my, uh, Macs in my collection. It's just a, uh, quirk it has.
Well, it leaves me uh, time to talk about the, uh, the PCIM A card slot. Yes, this PowerBook G3 Wall Street comes with a PCM IA card slot. And you can plug all sorts of adapters into it, including a uh, USB one, because, well, this computer is um, dependent on ADB. So, third party companies uh, made USB adapters for it. And this one used to come with one, but unfortunately, it was broken. And uh, I have tough luck on eBay trying to find a replacement. However, it is pretty cool as it allows you to plug in all sorts of uh, USB devices. Because, well, unlike the PowerBook G3 Pismo, this PowerBook G3 has no USB ports on it whatsoever. Oh, look, there's the Mac OS 8.6 logo popping up. But the question is, will it go to the bar? Let's wait. Doesn't look like it. Let's restart. This is a fun drinking game for y'all. Count how many times I restart the uh, PowerBook G3 Wall Street. Actually, don't do that, because, well, you'll kill yourself. But it's a fun game, though. Still a fun game. It's a happy Mac. So far, so good. Mac OS 8.6 startup screen. Mouse cursor showed up. It's looking good. And froze. Yeah, the Smack is a really good laptop. It just has problems that it needs to get over. And yeah, I had to restart several times for the boot race as well. Once we get it booted up, we'll play some games. Alright, it's looking good. We actually got a bar this time. Let's jump cut. Alright, after crashing and burning several times, it's finally up and running. Oh look, there's the PowerBook G3 Wall Street there. It's got a dual display thing. But the display we'll be focusing on is the uh, the VGA display. Alright, so we're going to test out some games. Let's play some games. And the first one that we got to test out is Dinosaur Adventure 3D. Now this is a pretty cool game because you get to learn all about dinosaurs. Yeah, you get to learn all about uh, various facts of dinosaurs and all. Ok, 
Okay. Let's put it in. Put the CD in. Oh yeah. It's always great when a Mac works. So you get to have that full experience. And it's got sounds too. It's got sounds in the desktop. I miss that in the uh, newer uh, Mac OS. It's those good old iconic sounds. Very nice. Yeah, I know it's weird to get aroused by old computer sounds, but hey, it's better than having a furry fetish. And no, that is not meant to uh, be offensive. Do not take that seriously. I'm just here to have fun. Alright. Let's switch to 256 color mode and let the adventure begin! Yeah, it's made by uh, Knowledge Adventure, the same guys that made that math game. That's a pretty cool intro. It's the T Rex. Hi, I'm Rolf, the Parasolophus. The Parasolophus. Yeah, it's that uh, plant eating uh, theropod. Yes, I know a lot about dinosaurs, but I know specific types of dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs are called sauropods, some are called theropods. And debatably, the uh, the pterodactyl isn't a dinosaur. Although I think it is, it's a flying dinosaur. Yeah, we already got a uh, save game loaded, thankfully. This is what we're talking about. Let's go explore Paleo Island. Come on. All right. Yeah, it's kind of ironic that we're playing a uh, educational game on a business computer. This is a really powerful uh, gaming machine. It's easily one of the best picks for a uh, vintage Mac gaming. Although not nearly really as excellent as the uh, Power Mac G4. We can get to the Jurassic. We can get to the Jurassic period there. The Jurassic period. All right, let's divvy on over to Jurassic Park. Well, sadly, uh, Ian Malcolm and Brian Hammond are nowhere to be seen. Terrence will tell you when there's one nearby. Brian Hammond or someone else, I don't really Island remember. A man's body is about 50 times so, yeah. the weight of his brain. A big dinosaur yeah, weighs so 50,000 times what its brain weighs. Let's get a closer look. It's a Dilophosaurus. Though the hands of Dilophosaurus were small, they were strong for tearing meat. It's a Dilophosaurus. Yeah, this is giving me Jurassic Park vibes, because remember that scene in uh, Jurassic Park where, uh, Dennis Nedry, Wayne Knight's character has to, uh, has to get out of here, but he gets, um, suddenly, uh, spotted by, uh, Dilophosaurus in the, uh, Jeep. You remember that scene, right? Alright, it's a mosquito. Let's click the mosquito. Giant dragonflies were common. It's actually a dragonfly. And were a popular snack pastry for carnivores.
Alright, so that's that. Cycads are stout woody plants found all over the earth during the Jurassic. Let's see if we can click the river. Kind of the like, waterfall. Well, pine cones that need a hair. Life began in the ocean as tiny single celled creatures too small for you to see. Unless you were a tiny single celled creature. How do you get back? Oh, you, uh, you go there. The escape key doesn't, uh, work. That's because they, uh, you go that down there and, uh, menus pop up. Alright, let's... Can get to that area is the Triassic period. Let's go into the Triassic period. Can't remember what... James Hammond or Brian Hammond, I can't remember what his name is. He's the guy responsible for Jurassic Park, according to the uh, the movie. Connect a cave is that way. All right, there's a game. We finally got a game. So we're supposed to uh, drag the uh, if you're stuck, the icons here. Try working backwards from the dino to me. This is easier said than done, considering that. Well, sometimes you have to go in lots of different directions before you get to the goal. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, First, make a path yeah, from me up. to the baby dino, and then to its mother. This will be a brain teaser for our kids. It's a pretty simple uh, game, though. All you have to do is connect the path. It's basically if like uh, stuck, try working backwards from the dino to me. Like connect the dots, except well. Making a path to the dinosaur. First, make a path from me to the baby dino, and then to its mother. Alright, you have to make a path to its uh, mother as well. Sometimes you have to go in lots of different directions before you get to the goal. Yeah, it's easier said than done considering that. I don't have any uh, mouse pads with me. First, make a path from me to the baby dino, and then to its mother. There, that's much easier. Using a Lego Mario box as a, uh... As a mouse pad. If you're stuck, try working backwards from the dino Hey, look like that, man. Alright, so let's uh make a path from me to the baby dino and then to its mother. Baby dino. Alright, let's uh this if is... you're stuck, try working backwards from the dino to me. Okay, let's see. Sometimes you have to go in lots of different directions before you get to the goal. Did 
the rock in the path. If you're stuck, try working backwards from Dino to me. Yep, yeah, this is the uh, the puzzle segment of the game. Make a path from me to the baby dino, and then to its mother. Sometimes you have to go in lots of different directions before you get to the goal. Yes, we know that, uh, Mr. Parasolophus. You can't remove the rock. The rock is basically uh, stuck there. Sometimes you have to go click on a cave card first. Okay. If you're stuck, try working backwards from the dino to me. Alright. First, make a path from me to the baby dino, and then to its mother. Yeah, you have to put it in a, a specific order. Sometimes you have to go in lots of different directions so I found before you out. the goal. You did it! Alright, we did it. So I figured out that it has to be put in a specific now, order. If you want to help me use the map, click here. If you want to make another map, click here. Alright, that's that. We figured out the puzzle. Make my path a fun one. Click on each of the cards and choose a picture to go in its place. For every kind of card, there are two pictures you can choose. Just click again to see the next one. Alright, let's uh take the And there's the bridge of doom. Through the bony forest. It's actually pretty creative. Alright, let's go. So we made a, uh, a path, although we didn't get to see the dino walk the path. It's probably because we have to have to get three hatching crystals. Do you really want to leave Connect a Cave? Yeah, that's Connect a Cave in a nutshell. Alright. One more uh, section. Click here to fly up over the island. All right, one more uh, section. Hey, Walt! I learned a trick: flying upside down. Want to see? Um, no. 
We can get to that area. That's the critic. That's where the hatchery and the crystal theater are. The Cretaceous period. All right, let's go to the Cretaceous period. Go there. There's a Triceratops and two uh, Spinosaurus. And yeah, those are Spinosaurus, not Dimetrodons. Dimetrodon ain't a dinosaur. Yeah, let's see a cave. Oh, look! It isn't the Velociraptor. Learn about the Velociraptor, one of the most iconic dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. And intelligent, Velociraptor was one of the most dangerous creatures ever. And they can even open doors. They're about as intelligent as dolphins. Whoa! Although uh, they can't uh, find the kids, so it's probably because well. They're the main characters. Yeah, you can pick all day, but well, main characters can't die. It's a, um, it's the main rule of movies. Help me match the dinosaur eggs. Yeah, this so is a uh, matching match puzzle. It's pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty easy game. Small head, long neck, seal of feces. Yeah, this is a pretty simple game. Nine feet long, seal of feces. Look at that frill, Protoceratops. Protoceratops. Yeah, I knew about the Styracosaurus and uh, Triceratops, but I didn't know that was a thing. It's probably a, uh, a non-horned variation Take of the Triceratops. Should do some more uh, research on dinos. Discovered in England, you Eustriptospondylus. Eustriptospondylus. Yeah, discovered in the, uh, England. Yeah. Linlad Sr. probably discovered it. <laughs> yeah, this... Another Loud House joke in the, um... Video. Triangular Head, Edmontonia. Edmontonia. Alright, that's enough of that. Are you sure you want to leave... It's a pretty simple matching game. Anybody could do it. Let's see if there's anything in the Jurassic period. Let's go back to Jurassic Park. Let's see if there's a mini game in there. Because I haven't checked. Yeah, there's another mini game. Here we come. Move the cursor around me. I'll jump whichever way the arrow is pointing. Or just use the arrow keys on your keyboards. Alright, arrow keys. Yeah, this is the uh, first mini game you have to do where you use the arrow keys. And the arrow keys are arranged in a weird way on this uh, older ADV keyboard. So yeah, it's kind of hard to figure it out because, well, it's not a uh, usual way of doing it. But it is pretty simple though. 
All right, let's go. I love the good old click of the ADB keyboard. So much better than modern keyboards. Don't worry, I'll get you out of here. We found the uh, the baby T Rex, who will go Terrific on to be job. nature's you perfect really killer. Well. And the king or queen of the dinosaurs. Oh yeah, it's a pretty easy oh mini game. memory. Let's restart. We're back in Jurassic Park. That way yeah, there's a, a crystal over at the that waterfall. Way to bone builder. Yeah, and there is a mini game in there. It's called Bone Builder. Let's see what this is about. Choose a fossil to work on. Just click on the one you want. Alright, let's see. There's the Triceratops. There's a um, skull of a um, Velociraptor. It could be a uh, Spinosaurus. There's another uh, skull of a uh, skull of a uh, Therapy. Yeah, and there's Velociraptor skull. Skull of Carnotaurus. Because of that, ha has a uh, skin. I'll have to uh, do some research on what kind Choose of skull say you to work on. Wait, Carnotaurus doesn't on have horn on the uh, on its uh, snapped. And there's the skull of the T Rex. Yeah, let's choose the T Rex. Build a T Rex. That doesn't go in there. Like, that's another arm. Yeah, kind of got me confused at first, but I figured it out the hard way. Get to build a T Rex. It's easily the best mini game in the entire game because, Super well. Shot. That should be in a museum. It should. What do you call the biggest, most ferocious meat eater that ever set foot on Earth? Whatever it wants to be called. We call it Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrannosaurus. The, the, the biggest, lizards. meanest nice dinosaur day. out there. Nice yeah, we build ourselves a T-Rex. It's easily the best minigame in the... Uh, yeah, it's easily the best uh, mini game out there, and uh, you can you build other dinosaurs. All right, so if you want to build another dinosaur, wait, that's a brontosaurus skull. Those are a sauropod skulls. Yeah, that's a skull of. A Dimetrodon! Dimetrodon isn't even a dinosaur! Just click on the one you want. That's a skull of a, uh, horned velociraptor. Dimetrodon isn't even a dinosaur, so I figured out what those skulls are. Let's build a skull of Brontosaurus. Yeah, I know what a Brontosaurus looks like, but I've never seen its skull before. Study paleontology better. Click. There we go. Just watch out, does it doesn't stomp on you. You stuck with it till you finished. That's backbone. A was a it's actually an apatosaurus. 
yeah, there are different uh, sauropods in the uh, dinosaur genus. Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and different species in the uh, range. <laughs> But they all look um, pretty much um, similar. Are you sure you want? Oh. Let's build another dinosaur. Let's build the very last one. Because this one got me over a loop. Dimetrodon. Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. Yeah, it's basically a creature that existed before the dinosaurs did. Super job! That should be in a museum. Should. Dimetrodon was from the Permian era, just before the. Dimetrodon or Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. Dimetrodon, want to get once again. Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. All right, just for a. Uh, let's see what's different about this skeleton. First, because they're uh, both uh, theropods. Yeah, even though it looks like it go over there, it actually is supposed to go over there. I should be at a, uh, a dinosaur museum constructing skeletons. Yeah, I know a lot about paleontology, but again, Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. Stuck with it till you finish. That's this is a dinosaur, however. The Plateosaurus. Means that it could walk on two legs or four. Yeah. It's a, uh, once again, a uh, different dinosaur in the sauropod species. Alright. And we got one more to build. This dinosaur. Let's see what it is. Has a uh, spiked uh, horn on the top. Definitely looks like the Indoraptor from uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Way to build those bones! Ceratosaurus of the it's a Ceratosaurus. A Never heard of that dinosaur before. First time I ever heard of it. For warning away predators, for identifying it to others, for playing rings. Never heard of that one before. Study more paleontology. Yeah, that dinosaur hasn't been introduced in a Jurassic Park movie yet. Are you sure you yeah, want we want to put... Alright, last but not least, let's take a look at the hatchery. Click here. Hey, look! There's that pretty pebble I lost! Yeah, so, what is this exactly, the hatchery? Well, you're about to find out. So once you gather up enough crystals, you get to uh, use them for a, an egg. You've got enough crystals. Now you need an egg. The nests are for the dino babies you hatch. 
All right, so once you get up enough crystals, you can get yourself an egg and put it in the hatchery. So this game actually becomes a collectathon. All right, so that's the gist. Look for an egg in the pretty good to learn and pretty fun to do. If I have time, and the chance, I might collect the all the dinosaur eggs to Click beat the, to the mother effing T-Rex. Let's uh, exit out of this game. All right, on to the next game, or program, because we got a lot to discuss. All right, so this is Encarta 97. It's basically like a um, an encyclopedia on discs. I don't have the first disc for it, but let's uh, show you what um, this uh, disc has to offer. Could not find. Eh. Yeah, these are basically the files. On the second disc. Yeah, this is basically like a, um, a pre-internet Wikipedia. Yeah, Microsoft used to, uh, release a lot of these on um, s several uh, CD compilations like the Cinemania discs yeah it allows you to look at say um, facts and various reference guides So yeah, I don't have the first disc for it, but it allowed you to look at various uh, facts. That's an S and M thing. Yeah, the reason why I'm talking about this is because, well, A lot of these compilations were released until, well, Microsoft stopped releasing them when the, uh, the internet started to become more and more popular. So once uh, Wikipedia and uh, other uh, article sites start popping around, nobody needed these CD compilations anymore. So yeah, that's the gist. And it's a pretty cool... Uh, CD compilation. Just to uh, show you what it would look like. I have the disc right there. Let's uh, get it out. This is the description for the uh, the program. Yeah, I don't have everything on it. All right, let's eject the CD and put in the final program. All right, so we put in the program. And, uh, in case you're wondering, you go up to the uh, System Profiler, come on, if it ever shows up. Yeah, you can see that it is a 266 megahertz PowerPC G3 processor from the uh, 
PowerBook G3 PDQ, like I ex mentioned before. Alright, so you want to know what the last program we're going to take, take a look at is? You're about to find out. It's... Starcraft! Yeah, I already have the game installed. Let's place ourselves some Starcraft. And listen to those glorious speakers. Turn up the volume. Well, the volume adjustment is set and the menu doesn't have a uh, built in volume switch. Let's exit the program for now. See how well his speakers sound. Alright. Where's the uh, system press? There's the control panels. Sound. Alert volume. Sound out. Sound. Volumes. There we go, that's good. Oh yeah, those are some really good speakers, man. Now, let's let these speakers rip and play some good old StarCraft, because why not? Oh yeah. Just listen to those friggin' speakers. I turn up the max. Those are some very powerful stereo speakers. Alright, original. We got a game saved. Alright, let's do the tutorial level. Yeah, you see, before um, the M1 MacBook Pro, these were uh, probably the best built-in speakers of any Apple laptop computer. The M1 MacBook Pro has, like, cinema-like speakers. The speakers on them are really good. They're great. And these speakers on the PowerBook G3 Wall Street are even better than the ones on the mid-2012 MacBook Pro. Alright, so this is boot camp. Welcome to Marsara, Magistrate. The equipment demonstration you requested is prepared and may be initiated at your convenience. Simply select Start to begin the demonstration. You may skip the demonstration by selecting Skip Tutorial. Alright, so see a demonstration. The T280 SCV is the cornerstone of our hostile environment construction and resource gathering operations. Roger that. In order to build a thriving colony, numerous SCVs are necessary. You can build additional SCVs at a command center. Alright, so it's pretty similar to uh, the Warcraft. And that's because it is basically Warcraft, but in space. Just like Warcraft, you can uh, build all sorts of uh, resource collectors at your disposal. You must have enough supply depots to support them. You can use SCVs to build additional supply depots. Alright. 
build structure. Let's build ourselves a supply depot. Now these are basically like the uh, the homes in Warcraft. Houses. Yeah, and you need those in order to uh, to carry uh, more men. And again, please don't feel offended because, well, I'm not referring to one specific gender, but a whole group of people. Man doesn't always mean male, you know. Doesn't always have to be male. It could also mean multiple people. Alright, let's build ourselves another. An Not SCP enough materials. Mine more materials. To collect more minerals. Yeah, this is exactly like the. Uh, Not enough gold. Mine more gold. Thing in Warcraft. Alright, so we got the gist. Let's go back to the menu. And play ourselves a real game. Alright. Yeah, we want to quit the mission. Yeah, we already know how to play the game. Because, well... It's Warcraft, but in space. Let's play ourselves a mission. We're going to play ourselves the very first mission in the game. Adjutant online. Good evening, Magistrate. Also... Yeah, let's skip that. Alright, so yeah, just like Warcraft, you have like unexplored areas. And you have to be with your uh, resources. Alright, let's see if there are any enemies knocking them out. Yeah, I'm not that stupid. I know how to play these kind of games. I've always been playing them for a long time. Howdy boys. I'm Jim Rainer, Marshal of these parts. Yeah. Oh, and I'm not gonna leave out any spoilers. Oh no, there's an enemy knocking about. Yeah, this game didn't have a sequel up until, um, the early 2010s. Which is, uh, ironic considering that Warcraft has had multiple sequels. Especially one released a year after the first one came out. Which is funny. Yeah, this is the old Blizzard. The Blizzard that we miss. Alright, let's use our SCVs to mine stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, we have to uh, put the gather button. if there are any more enemies knocking about. Sounds fun. Yeah, there's a pathway there. Light on. Pathway into darkness. Oh, we're in enemy territory.
This game was also released the same year this computer came out. Oh, and it also uh, shows you how much damage your units have taken, just like in uh, Warcraft. But unlike Warcraft, it shows you the, uh, the damage, specific damage levels on there. Yeah, this was never shown in uh, Warcraft. Makes this game stand up from uh, the Warcraft game. I so wish that Blizzard Entertainment made World of Starcraft instead of wasting resources on Overwatch. Yeah, I feel that that game was made specifically to compete with Team Fortress 2. And yeah, you can make the argument. Let's uh, make some more units. Terran Supply Depot. Alright, let's build ourselves a uh, barracks. Build structure. The barracks. Now this, everyone knows what a barracks does. Basically makes you more units. So you can attack the enemies at your disposal. And just like Warcraft, it shows you how much progress your building has until it's completely built. But like again, like before, unlike Warcraft, it actually shows you the damage levels. Yeah. Once the um, the damage levels are in the yellow, they are rough. Well, they're not damaged that badly, but if they're in the red, they are pretty badly damaged, and you must get them back to base. It's pretty simple to explain. Infantry units such as Marines can be trained at this facility. Might need another supply depot. Let's build ourselves a supply depot. This is great. You want a piece of me, boy? Yeah, those are Marines. And here's an interesting thing, even though uh, Games Workshop is known for suing anyone who dares to use the name Space Marine in their uh, work of fiction, these guys have gotten by without a hitch. Maybe because uh, StarCraft takes inspiration from uh, Warhammer is actually different. It's probably the reason. These are the Space Marines, so not to be confused with the Space Marines from Warhammer 40k. Or Warhammer 40,000. Alright, we've got our Marines built. Yeah, these are the basic uh, foot soldier units. You get more units as you uh, progress in the game, and the objectives are uh, different. You want a piece of me, boy? Standing by. Yeah, this is only just an insight in the game, a quick insight. And this is the absolute first mission in the game. Go ahead, Commander. Yeah, the very basic mission. Move out. We've got enough units. 
Oh, and you can also have, you also have, like, room for more units to select. As opposed to, like, Warcraft rule. Where, like, the older Warcraft games where I believe you can only select, uh, six or eight units at a time. That's what the Kool-Aid man says. There's no enemy base here. Let's see if there's an enemy base here. Alright, let's go into our uh, menu and see what the mission objectives are. Train 10 marines, build a barracks, and Raynor must survive. Pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, Raynor must survive. Whoops. Your forces are under attack. Yeah, remember, Raynor must survive. Alright, this is the first mission. Yeah, and when you're playing a game, the uh, second dis secondary uh, display is not used. Count up how many marines we train to train so far. Rock and roll. Yeah, this is a, just the, uh, the first and easiest mission in the game. Although we may need more supply depots, so let's build a supply depot. Which costs 100 crystals, by the way. Yeah, and each uh, unit has their uh, number of kills displayed on there, just like how uh, certain uh, towers in Bloom's Tower Defense have a number of balloons popped. And we completed the mission. That was pretty easy. Alright, so that's that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I've played this game before, and you do have more uh, missions on the way. And Also, there's a campaign editor where you can edit your own mission, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool that they included that. But that does it for the uh, the PowerBook G3 Wall Street video. Yeah, after many years, I finally got a chance to take a look at this computer properly. And it was worth the wait. So, let's shut the computer down after we ejected the StarCraft CD. That's a pretty good look at the uh, PowerBook G3 Wall Street. And we had some uh, exploring. Alright, so, there you go. Alright, so that's the, uh, the PowerBook G3 Wall Street. More specifically, the one I have is dubbed as the Franken Book. Thank you for watching, and I uh, hope to uh, 
See you all next time. The Museum of Apple Computers is finally back in business after all these years. Oh, there's Becky's car and her um, vacation home that she rents. It's I've heard that uh, Becky rented this uh, home for uh, her uh, vacation in, in Atlantic Canada. And that she's taking a break from just staying to uh, Royal Woods all the time. Yeah, that's what at least someone uh, told me while it was at the... Uh, at the... at the bar. Pretty nice car, eh? It definitely fits the redhead pretty well. Sleek. I bet you, if anything, that would probably smoke the doors off of that light blue car that was seen in the Coop Dreams. I think it's Coop Dreams. I can't remember that uh, episode. Haven't seen that episode since it uh, first premiered um, last year.